my old bleached bones scattered around. <laughs> Perhaps someone would stumble upon my pelvis and bring it home and hang it over their front door. <laughs> Seems like a fitting end, doesn't it? My art has always been the one stable influence in my life. I have always been aware of images and colors and designs, not just as things in themselves, but ideas to be repeated on paper or canvas. Now, my eyes are going. I just can't stop thinking about Alfred. Started last night. I don't like these times when all these people from my past start following me around. Even people I never liked. <laughs> don't they know I came out here to get away from them? Alfred, too. Lately, he's been weighing on my memories, on my mind. I just can't seem to escape him this night. When you're an artist, really an artist and serious, you know who the important people in the art world are. Oh, you may not set out to know who they are, but sooner or later your life crosses theirs in some minute way. That's how I came to know Stieglitz in the beginning, when I was an art student at the Art Students League in New York City. He was a very important man in the world of photography and art. He had begun to show the two together to make photography an art form. His gallery, 291 it was called, was bridging the gap between American and European art. It was a very important time in the history of art in the United States. We were sent down to his gallery to see some Rodin drawings that he was showing. <laughs> I went with a group of male students. I still remember when he came out of his dark room into the light. He was a good-looking man <laughs> with that disheveled shock of dark hair standing straight up on top of his head. He was so intense at that moment, it was almost frightening. Perhaps it was that he was still involved in whatever piece it was he was developing. <clears throat> Alfred was always serious about whatever he did. It didn't matter what it was. Perhaps that was his appeal for the rest of us. It was an appeal that could drag you down or lift you up. He was not an easy man. Well, then, are any of us? I should have known that in the beginning. Maybe I did. Because I remember the students picking an argument with him. He had quite a reputation for his very definite ideas on things. He was so volatile and loud that I retreated into another room until they had stopped. It was seven years before I saw him again, years of teaching art at different art schools, years of struggle, trying to find my art. I'd even stopped painting for a year. I'd grown tired of doing things for other people, things they would approve of, not for myself, and that seemed a little foolish. It was the best thing I could have done, because when I began again, it was as if my mind were creating images I wasn't even aware of, and I put them down on paper and I sent them to my friend, Danita. <laughs> I asked her to look them over, tell me if I was crazy or not. Well, she did more than that. She liked the drawings, and she thought Stieglitz would too. So she marched down to 291, and she gave them to him. He liked them all right, enough to hang them in his gallery without my permission. <laughs> well, I was furious when I found out. So I came into town, and I told him to take them down. Well. He said he wouldn't, and we got into an argument. 
he won. <laughs> he always won. But we liked each other and started writing back and forth. Oh, I remember his letters. They were so exciting to me, full of ideas and charm and incredible energy. They won me those letters. There had been other men, but unlike him, they were all men I was considering. It took me 31 years to stop considering. <laughs> that seems like a long time, doesn't it? His friend, Paul Strand, the photographer, was interested in me, and I was considering him. Stieglitz won out. I fell so in love with him. I guess I just didn't realize what a toll being with him would take on my health. You don't care about those <coughs> things when you're young, do you? Alfred was immovable and stuck in his ways. Well, he was 54 when we moved in together, and I was 31, nearly 23 years difference, and then didn't seem like a day. Oh, he was charming and had a youthfulness and impishness that never left him. When he was an old man in his 80s, he was still asking young women about their sex lives because he was still interested. <laughs> Even in 1946, that last time I saw him before I left on my yearly visit out here, the year he died, his hair was pure white and still disheveled, his body a little stooped under his black cloak that he liked to wear, so very dramatic. He held me close, very close close to him, that fleeting moment of desperation in his hug, just for a moment, and then it was gone. And then I was gone, and by the end of the summer, he was gone. You see, I could not have stayed in New York and not gone to New Mexico that summer. If I had, he would have won again. My survival had become so important to me, and the months that I spent here made it possible for me to be strong enough to be with him the rest of the year. It's strange the things we pick to survive. So, there I was, going off into a life with an older man who was still married, even though they had been estranged for many years, there was still a wife and a daughter. It was five or six years before the divorce became final. I don't remember exactly. I do remember I didn't want to marry anybody, not even him. Well, the next 15 years of my life were devoted to Alfred, my art, to New York City in the winter, and the house in upper New York at Lake George in the summer. It was Alfred's pattern, and he never varied very far from it. <clears throat> the large German-Jewish family he had come from was very important to him. So in the summer, everyone left the city for Lake George. The house was large, and Ma ran things. All the brothers and sisters and children and over the years, children of the children were there. Can you imagine 20 people all eating corn at the same time? I never got used to it. There was no place for me there. Oh, they were nice to me. And I came to accept them over time. I just never liked large groups of people. Didn't then, and don't now. I guess that explains why I'm here, doesn't it? Me not liking groups of people and Stieglitz and his need for them. Always a lot of people around. 
and we always lived in small places. For a while, we lived in Lee Stiegler's house. That was Alfred's brother. 